Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to uh, application of Gauss law to determine the electric field due to various charge configurations. So previously we discussed about uh, the electric field due to an infinite line charge. So here we'll be discussing about uh, how we can apply Gauss law to find the electric field due to an infinite plane sheet of charge. Okay, so just a quick review. We all know uh, what the statement, the basic uh, concept of Gauss law is that the total electric flux, that is the number of electric field lines passing through an imaginary closed surface is 1 by epsilon 0 times the net charge enclosed by the closed surface. Okay, mathematically, this electric flux we all know is the closed surface integral of the electric field vector and the area element vector, E vector dot ds vector. And also, as per Gauss law, electric flux is equal to Q net by epsilon 0. We have already discussed about Gauss law in a separate video, so you can please watch that video. <clears throat> okay, now we know that one of the most important application of Gauss law is determination of electric field due to a charge configuration and to write a relationship between electric charge and electric field. So for that the concept of Gaussian surface is employed. So in this uh, discussion the situation is something like this as it is given in this uh, diagram. So, what we have is this plane sheet of charge. Here I have confined it like this, but it is spread everywhere up to infinity on all four sides. Okay. So, this is an infinite plane sheet of charge and it is positive. Okay, as you can see, because of the positive sign, we have taken positive charge. <clears throat> and we have to determine what will be the electric field due to this infinite plane sheet of charge, this charge configuration. In the previous video, we discussed infinite line charge. So the charge was only contained in one dimension, in one direction. Here it is in two dimensions. Okay. The infinite line charge can only be in X, can only be in Y, can only be in Z or in any direction, in one direction. But here it's in one plane. Okay, two axes are involved. Okay, so this is the situation and spread unif uh, infinitely, uniformly and infinitely in all directions. So here we have to select an appropriate suitable Gaussian surface. We have to pick a certain section of this uh, plane sheet of charge and uh, apply a suitable Gaussian surface. So we have picked a cylindrical Gaussian surface, okay, where the distance of one, you know, end cap of the cylinder from the point where it uh, kind of we imaginary meets with the plane sheet that is equal to R from this point to this end cap point that is R same goes for this side also R from this end cap the left end cap to this point okay same thing okay and uh, and it will have a certain radius so here we have already taken R so we will take a different symbol. Let's say this radius is um, x. Okay, radius is x. Okay, so this is the imaginary Gaussian surface. Okay, hypothetical imaginary Gaussian surface. So this cross section. Okay, let me use a different ink. This cross section here of uh, this uh, imaginary Gaussian surface which covers the plane sheet and accumulates this much charge within it that is our main uh, you know focus here okay 
another important thing the surface charge density is given it is sigma coulomb per meter square okay the charge is uniformly distributed with surface charge density sigma coulomb per meter square so for every square meter we have sigma amount of charge uh, there on the plane sheet again <clears throat> here let me uh, use a different diagram a clean one here we have to divide this uh, cylindrical gaussian surface and analyze in two parts first is this cylindrical part okay this cylindrical portion and then the two end caps this end cap the left end cap and the right end cap the circular uh, area this is the right end cap this is the left end cap and the total electric flux because of this uh, plane sheet of charge taking into consideration the cylindrical gaussian surface that will be the electric flux due to the cylindrical portion and the electric flux uh, due to i mean uh, the electric flux through the end caps okay this okay number of field lines passing through the cylindrical portion and the flux through the end caps that is only uh, we have to consider here now again the basic definition of electric flux is the surface integral of the electric field vector and the area element vector we have already discussed many times that the area vector is always directed outwards perpendicularly normally from the point okay so if we consider the cylindrical portion of uh, the cylinder in that case the area vector will be like this always pointing outwards okay always the area vector will be pointing radially outwards and for this uh, end caps the area vector will always be like this as it is pointed here for any small area it will always be pointing perpendicularly normally outwards like this okay here also this here also this like this again we know that for positive charge the electric field lines are always directed away from it the electric field lines are directed away from a uh, positive charge so in this direction this direction also in the opposite direction it can be there like in straight lines parallel to the length of the cylinder okay like this these are the electric field lines these are electric field lines directed away from a positive charge on both sides towards the left end cap and also towards the right end cap as there are infinite number of positive charges here there will be sufficient number of field lines passing uh, through the both of the end caps parallel to the length of the cylinder now here we have to note here that for the entire cylindrical portion okay for the entire cylindrical portion the let me use a, a different thing okay let me use a blank slide so for the entire cylindrical portion as the area element vectors are always directed radially outwards okay and the electric field lines are always pointing in straight lines towards the left and right end caps so for the entire cylindrical portion of the gaussian surface the angle between the electric field uh, vector and the surface element vector it will always be 90 degree e vector will be perpendicular to ds vector theta is 90 degree but for the end caps both the left and right 
for the end caps both left and right the electric shield lines are always parallel or in the same direction as the area element vector as you can see here this okay here uh, here this e vector and ds vector are on the same lines here e vector and ds vector they are along the same line okay and for every small area here here also ds vector there will be an electric field line which will be along the same direction here this is the ds vector there will be an electric field line which will pass through it parallel to it in the same direction so for the end caps here the angle between e vector and ds vector that is zero for end caps angle between e vector and ds vector that is zero theta is zero degree so now we have to follow the definition so for the cylindrical portion if we calculate electric flux okay for the cylindrical portion if we calculate electric flux phi e is equal to closed surface integral of the electric field vector and the surface element vector that is equal to closed surface integral e ds cos theta theta is 90 degree cos 90 degree so that will be equal to 0 for the cylindrical portion for the end caps we have both left and right end caps so first let us consider one end cap so for the end caps the electric flux will be equal to closed surface integration dot product of electric field vector and the surface element vector that is equal to e ds cos 0 degree which is equal to e ds closed surface integration now here as the charges are at a fixed distance r from either both of the end caps here also it is at a distance r the sheet and here also it is at a distance r from the sheet plane sheet so as the distance is fixed the electric field magnitude will also be fixed that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square okay this this will be fixed as r is fixed as r is fixed constant so e will also be fixed it will be constant okay so now as e is fixed then here e will go outside the integration and will become ds and that will be equal to let's say e a where a is equal to area of the end cap area of both the left and right end cap it will be the same it will be equal to pi x square isn't it area of the circle the radius is x but here don't put that pi x square thing only keep it as a okay why am I keeping it as a you will see it will simplify the whole thing so that will be equal to a so the electric flux due to one end cap is ea so we have two end caps we have two end caps so the electric flux due to both the end caps okay the electric flux due to both the end caps left and right end cap that is equal to 2 e a this is the electric flux due to both left and right end cap now as per gauss law the electric flux passing through a closed imaginary gaussian surface is the amount of charge enclosed by that gaussian surface so here the amount of charge enclosed by this circular cross section the cylindrical 
Gaussian surface is basically the amount of charge enclosed by this circular cross section of the cylinder this okay this is the total amount of charge that is enclosed by the Gaussian surface and the area of this cross section is equal to a the surface charge density is sigma coulomb per meter square so the charge enclosed by the cylindrical Gaussian surface that will be equal to how much sigma this much charge will be uh, enclosed by it okay so here we can write it as applying Gauss law electric flux is equal to E vector dot ds vector which is equal to 2ea we have calculated also electric flux is equal to q by epsilon 0 if we equate these two equations q net okay q net by epsilon 0 if we equate these two equations we'll have 2 e a is equal to q net that is the total charge enclosed by this cylindrical Gaussian surface by epsilon 0 or that implies e is equal to q net by 2 a epsilon 0 now <clears throat> q net by a total charge enclosed by the surface by the area that is equal to how much the surface charge density sigma okay that so this becomes how much the expression of electric field that is equal to sigma by 2 epsilon 0 this is the expression of the electric field for an infinite plane sheet of charge and we have uh, chosen a cylindrical Gaussian surface to determine the expression of electric field in terms of the charge or the surface uh, the charge density here we have established that relationship so this is the relationship between the electric field and the charge configuration in terms of the surface charge density sigma and the absolute permittivity epsilon 0 permittivity of free space so this is the same thing which is uh, done here <clears throat> for the cylindrical part it is perpendicular so flux is 0 for the cylindrical part for the end caps the angle between e vector and ds vector is 0 there are two end caps so flux will be due to both of the end caps that is equal to 2 ea so the total electric flux 0 for the cylindrical portion 2 ea for the end caps this is the total electric flux now we apply gauss law gauss law states electric flux the surface integral of the dot product of electric field vector and surface element area vector which is also equal to the net charge enclosed by the gaussian surface by epsilon 0 now the charge enclosed by the cylindrical gaussian surface is this this blue portion uh, uh, which i have highlighted here which is the circular cross section of the cylinder where it meets the uh, it kind of uh, imaginary you know meeting with the plane sheet it is uh, kind of penetrating through the plane sheet like that so this is an imaginary surface so we are uh, we have uh, we have made it like as if this imaginary gaussian surface is piercing through or penetrating through the plane sheet so this much charge is enclosed by the gaussian surface so that is equal to q net which is equal to sigma a where sigma is the surface charge density this sigma a and a is the area of the end cap region okay area is the a is the area of the end cap region both the end caps they have the same area left and right end cap so now uh, we simply equate both of them and we get e is equal to uh, q net by epsilon 0 q net is sigma a so that becomes sigma a, uh, uh, both uh, it gets cancelled q by a and that becomes sigma by 2 epsilon 0 okay so this is the thing so let us try to understand the situation which which we have here so here we have this is a, a plane sheet 
of charge okay infinite sheet and we have uh, we have only taken a finite portion of it okay plane sheet of charge spread infinitely and is positive okay positive charge all over it uniformly distributed with surface charge density sigma okay this is the cylindrical gaussian surface okay this is the cylindrical gaussian surface it is uh, we have it as if it is penetrating or piercing through the plane sheet of charge okay this it is penetrating or piercing through the plane sheet of charge now now let us see how the area vectors and the uh, electric field lines will be there now for the cylindrical portion so here for the cylindrical portion the electric uh, so uh, the area element vectors they will be like this okay let me use a different color so let us say we have picked a certain portion here okay this portion this portion this portion this portion like this so here the area vectors will be directed radially outwards normally perpendicularly away from that point so it will be like this like this see just focus on this point let me draw it so it will be like this okay radially outwards okay here also radially outwards okay here like this here also it will be radially outwards this will be the area vectors okay the area vectors here here this is also be like this from this point radially outwards okay but the electric field lines from this plane sheet of charge will either be imagine as if the arrows are coming towards you straight towards you from the screen or it is going away from you on the other side of the plane sheet like this let me again rotate it and show it to you so this is the uh, area element vectors the electric field lines will be like this use a black color so it will be like this away from it like this this side or the other side so for the entire cylindrical portion the electric field lines will always be perpendicular to the see the electric field lines will always be perpendicular to the area element vectors orthogonal no mutually perpendicular direction okay the electric field lines will always be perpendicular to the area element vectors but for the end caps okay for the end caps these two end caps the left and right end caps if we pick one spot here okay this let me use a other color um, green okay if we pick this spot the area vector for this small portion it will be like this ds vector this spot ds vector like this this spot ds vector so this will always be in the same direction as the electric field 
okay, as this electric field always in the same direction. Okay, always in the same direction. Okay, so here if we have another elemental area, it will be in the same direction. So the angle between E vector and DS vector for the end caps, it will always be zero. But for the cylindrical portion, it is always in the mutually perpendicular direction 90 degrees. Same goes for the other end cap also. Same thing. Same goes for the other side also. Okay. The electric field lines will always be in the same direction as the area uh, element vectors for the end cap. Okay. Like this here again like this okay like this and these are the electric field lines if we extend them like this like this okay the electric field lines from the plane sheet of charge they will always be in the same direction as the area vectors So the angle between them is 0 degree. So for the cylindrical portion, the angle between E vector and DS vector is 90 degree. For the two end caps left and right, the angle between E vector and DS vector that is equal to 0 degree because they are in the same line parallel to each other. Okay. So this is the situation. Okay. The electric field in terms of the charge configuration or surface charge density for uh, infinite plane sheet of charge with a cylindrical Gaussian surface.